Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Craig Sherba. He is the President and COO of Energizer Resources. How are you today, Craig? Excellent. Thank you, Tracy. Craig, I'm so happy that you are willing to talk to me a little bit about some of the misconceptions about the overall graphite industry, and I'm not really sure where to start. Would you like to start maybe flake size, or do you want to talk about the overall buzz in the industry? Okay, well, just a little bit of explanation so far as the graphite industry itself. It's a bit different than other commodities in that it's not like copper. Uh, it's not freely traded on the open market so far as a purity and a price. Uh, graphite is priced on the purity of the material but also on the size of the flake. So there's two different parameters there. And that's a, a big disconnect. I guess a lot of people don't really realize uh, that it's not just the purity of the product, it's the size of the flake as well that matters. And of course, um, I was speaking with uh, Jean Depetit, uh, and he was telling me that another misconception, of course, is that it's hard to get it out of hard rock. Um, so it would be kind of more enticing to get it out of Madagascar. Would that be correct, or do I have this wrong? This is why you're here. Correct uh, me. Once again, that's another misconception, so nice for you to bring it up. Uh, it's not necessarily harder to bring it out of uh, hard rock. It can be more expensive to bring it out of hard rock just because there's crushing indexes and it's an engineering problem. Uh, that being said, graphite is a very easy thing to mechanically separate, whether it's hard rock or soft rock. Um, the biggest thing, so far as graphite is concerned, is it's like a gravel deposit. It's a uh, high value added, uh, I guess, type of a material, uh, but it's a non-sexy commodity. You're basically just digging it out of the ground. So the closer you have it to the surface, uh, the lower the cost for extraction. So it's not so much the hard or soft rock, it's the, I guess, the proximity to the surface and your stripping ratio to get it out. What's your favorite fallacy about the graphite industry that you hear frequently that you would love to correct? Uh, that basically all graphite is treated equally, uh, and it's not. Uh, just because you have carbon in the ground doesn't mean that it has the same physical properties. Because uh, it's not just the, uh, the size of the flakes that matter, it's the electrical conductivity, it's the thermal conductivity, it's something called the expansion coefficient. Uh, this is really what they use uh, for foils, for example, in the back of iPads and phones and whatnot. They expand graphite to at least 500 times its normal size, flatten it out into a sheet, and they use it as a flexible heat sink in the back of material and there's probably only about five percent of all graphite that actually meets those criteria. So there's very very specific uh, technological uh, type of applications that graphite can be used for and there's really kind of a broad brush that everybody throws out there that all graphite is treated equally. You can throw it into all these applications and you can't. All right and what about the overall demand? Everybody's talking about Tesla. There must be other end users on the planet and I remember when I started in the rare earth industry Constantine told me if I didn't understand end users in Japan, I didn't understand anything about rare earths. Mm -hmm. Is there a similar metaphor for graphite? Um, yes, I guess. I mean, one of the, the other misconceptions about graphite is that uh, the lithium ion battery is really what's driving the graphite market. It's not. Uh, the largest driver of the graphite market is the refractory industry. So this is the steel industry. Uh, it's used as a refractory material so you don't really melt through uh, various metals because graphite has a very high melting temperature. Uh, volumetrically, that's probably about 45% of all graphite consumption right there. Batteries are probably within the single digits right now. Uh, what's kind of interesting about the battery market, though, is that's the fastest growing, and that has the hugest uh, demand potential uh, because there's very little market penetration right now so far as even uh, hand tools are concerned with lithium-ion batteries. A lot of that's still nickel metal hydride and various other kind of battery technologies. As that gets shifted over, that all requires graphite and lithium and various things. So that's a, a huge demand segment that's coming online right now. All right. So since you have been so gracious with sharing some of your knowledge and expertise in the graphite industry, tell us what some of the competitive advantages are for, for everyone out there interested in becoming shareholders in the graphite industry in Energizer Resources. Uh, well, I can kind of itemize them, I guess, list them off here. Uh, first off, our deposit is at surface. So basically we can go in there with front end loaders and scoop it out of the ground. Uh, the graphite is very easy to mechanically separate. It's uh, called hydrophobic, so it basically floats when you put it in water. You skim off the purified graphite. It gets to very, very high purities. Uh, so just with mechanical flotation, we can get purities of 97 to 98% uh, graphite purity with that. So that's very, very, very high purity material. So uh, high purity equals a lot of money. Uh, it has a very high proportion of large flakes. So over 43% of our deposit is the large flake and above uh, size. And it has passed all of the, um, I guess, specialist type of applications for graphite. Uh, we have a thermal expansion over 500 times. So we can use this in the, uh, I guess, the foil sheet. 
business. We have tested it in batteries. We've tested it in basically every application. So that's kind of what we've been doing over the last year and a half in the background, is really submitting material to various end users uh, to make sure that it is applicable for the various kind of end use markets. Well, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much, Tracy.